record. And I am any moment now just going to make him. Big screen. <laughs> Didn't find you for a minute. Okay, so I'm going to make you the host. Did you say co-host the other day? Would be better. Oh, co either's fine, really. Co-host is obviously the hand-holding preference. Okay, but I'm doing hand-holding preference. <laughs> for the first time, it's always helpful. Okay, over to you. It is all yours. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, Katina, for, and also for allowing us to, to do this uh, project spotlight for the benefit of other um, pilots taking part in the CM, CLMHP um, project. So, um, my name is Manoj. I'm the project manager at the college over here at RACC. Um, I've been doing this project since it started in July. And it's just, ooh, ding dong. Um, it's good to be out here amongst all of you as, as peers. Um, so I'm going to now sort of launch my presentation with you. My other kind of part of my job is um, I'm also uh, an IT tutor, so I've got no excuses today of not getting things right on the, on the IT front. Let's hope it all goes smoothly. So I should launch a presentation now and share screen, and up comes my Hopefully you can see, I'm going to just put into slide mode. Not yet. Oh, nearly there. Go yeah. to slideshow and from current slide. Can I just get a confirmation you can see my presentation, everyone? Is that all good, yeah? I see some people there. Thanks for coming and joining us. Uh, yes, you can get involved by chat too. That's correct. So let me go over to the, um, that's the college, a few sort of screenshots there of, kind of what we're about over here. Let's go into our... I can go into the first slide, which is the running order. So what we're going to be covering today, I'm going to briefly talk about RACC at the start, um, about our partnerships, features of our project, the types of courses we have, some of the lessons learned also so far. Now we're three months down the line. Um, some opportunities for Q&A and interaction for you. I mean, me being a teacher, you know what we're like. We, we like getting you involved and into interacting. So there's some activities for you to get involved with. And... Um, Finally, some opportunities to share some experience and best practice with, with your other pilots here. I'm going to try and keep to time, and at the end of the session, about five minutes before, I'll try and finish a little bit earlier, so we've got some time for one-to-one -one chat afterwards. Just so you know, the room I'm in right now, I'm occupying this classroom here, will be occupied by someone else at a quarter to two. So what happens, people are going to start appearing behind me in like a large mass, probably wondering what I'm up to, and we'll probably start peering over my shoulder, which is all good. Uh, okay, now over to the first slide about the college. So RACC, we are a little map there of London, you can see. And on the bottom left there, we've got a, uh, I'm just circling my mouse, the Richmond area. So we're like a, we're a further education and we're an adult education provider primarily. Uh, RACC stands for Richmond Adult and Community College. We've been going since the 18, 1830, I believe, as a once upon a time, a kind of an industrial provider for, techn for, for technical training. And um, our main kind of mission is about providing resources that enable adults to unlock their talent and fulfill their potential for learning skills and enterprise. That is also our, our mission statement. Recently went through a large scale refurbishment and luckily I can say it is now complete and over the majority of it. And that was finished in January 15. And we launched our wellbeing project in July 2015 with an event that we held in our, in our new theater. So, over to our, our partnerships, first of all. This is our, our, kind of our mosaic of partnerships. And I would say that the real kind of, my, one of the strengths I felt with the project is, you know, we've been an adult education college. The first thing is the context of working with clinical services and the, uh, the systems around that was a bit of a learning curve for us, certainly. We're not really used to that. And so we really needed to rely heavily on sort of partnerships with the Southwest London St. George's Trust, which was the first recovery college the Southwest Recovery College, and we're very grateful to have had their support on the project. Very much as a strategic alliance, they've given us support with workforce development and, and capacity building. Also delivered themselves some of the courses on our site through a partnership arrangement with us. Um, also, Richmond Borough Mind, which is the pri primary mental health charity um, nation nationwide, and also are very active in Richmond. They've also been very really helpful in referring to us clients who are the most in need of the service. The other partners also need a very specific mention in terms of the disadvantaged groups that give us access to. So you've got Richmond Aid, which is a disability advice and information group. You've got Richmond Homes and Lifestyles Trust, which is an LLDD specialist um, activities organizer. 
EMAG, the Ethnic Minorities Advocacy Group. Um, Richmond has also, although in a fairly affluent area in some ways, has also wards of deprivation. And EMAG gives us access to those wards of deprivation um, and those localities to access those learners. Often have English not as the first language too. Um, on the right hand side, you've got Community Partnership in SILS. This is a borough commissioned information service. This might be occurring in other localities also, but in, in Richmond particularly, the information service is provided by, the, by a group of charities working in consortium that do signposting to each other. So it's a very good concept. We've got SPEAR, which is a homeless charity that gives access to a homeless hostel and residents who live there, which is across the road from us over here. And they've been very active in getting some of the projects off the ground with us. And one of them is peer mentoring, which you'll hear about later on. And Achievement for Children, which is our, although children aren't part of the project, um, they are actually the um, social enterprise responsible for community learning in Richmond generally. Uh, the borough's adult and community learning is managed by AFC, Achievement for Children. So that's our partnerships there. So now over to um, some of the features of our project that are specific. So just for those of you who are completely fresh to all of this, um, I imagine that in some of the kind of cameras I've seen, there are some people who are sitting around the table. So some of you might not know all about the project. So RAC's wellbeing project, like the other pilots, is using community learning as a medium to help adults develop and improve their mental well-being and to recover from symptoms of stress, low mood or difficulty sleeping. Very much the mild to moderate phase of the, um, the mental health spectrum so as to prevent it, things getting worse uh, um, or pronounced. Uh, we launched in July 15th for an event I mentioned earlier on, and we've started delivery from August. We thought we'd get early, get moving early on our delivery so we can get momentum um, moving. So then provision obviously carried on from September onwards and it goes until the end of March, which is the end of the program um, for this particular year. Um, our wellbeing courses that are on the project, they, they feature a range of types of activities, which you'll see shortly, but they are in parallel with our mental wellbeing top-up courses. So occasionally people can do check out of their normal courses and drop into a top-up and come back out again, which has been a very effective way to access the more specialist stuff. And the Recovery College are actually delivering the primary top-up courses at the moment. Um, this project has, I would say, has enabled us to embed the concept of wellbeing in our mainstream offer, and that's been a big kind of learning curve for us and something we want to continue for the future. So how is this um, embedded? Let's just look at how we've done this. Um, if I can move my chat heads around to the other side. So this little diagram I've got here is just how we've embedded the, the five ways to well, well-being into our, our kind of college space. So you've got there the kind of, you might have heard this, this um, an acronym called CLANG, C-L-A-N-G. And uh, there are different letters of the five ways to well-being. You're probably familiar with some of these terms. But connection for us is our, just for our social spaces in the college where people hang out and they talk and they meet each other. This often is the place also for, for peer support and just informal friendships being built by learners with each other. This is massively beneficial. Also for staff and learners to be in the same social area too. And we've got a very diverse college. Learners, we you know, who are kind of from all around, you know, international learners uh, from different backgrounds. Um, we've got learners with LDD. Uh, we all share the same space and staff share the same cafe area too. It's a very diverse place. Um, connect also for events. We do run certain interest-based events, uh, the feature of the project, where you get people together who are interested in just a particular topic um, at one time. Uh, so over to learn, so obviously being in a college, you've got the variety of courses uh, where you get new skills, new talents. It's a good environment to learn more, more about. And there's various courses, short, long, even qualifications to move into employability as well. And obviously learning gets you out and about too, and learning can make you active. So you come to college is like a first step of in a way being active, coming out and meeting people to start there. Those who want to get even more active, we've got the exercise and fitness at varying speeds of music, um, up to even Zumba, you know, at the kind of aerobic high speed stuff. Um, that can be extremely beneficial for some people who are, you know, experiencing some of those symptoms. Getting into the body does really help sort of switch things around. And then the dance classes, which kind of integrate the concepts of, of movement with mindfulness, uh, which dance is a very good way of doing. Um, over to then give, uh, giving as a concept. So giving people volunteers, firstly starting out in the classroom and um, learners helping each other out on courses. This is where it begins. And um, they kind of help each other and support each other out. That's the first sense of giving that they start to feel. Then over to actual volunteering opportunities. And then on to mentoring. We have a concept of peer mentoring here. Those learners who have recovered and gone through lived experience then go on to, to help and bring others through. It's a very inspirational concept. Um, and then finally, taking notice. This is the kind of some of the curriculum we have to support mindfulness. Um, it's a very visual site as well, walking around here. We've got things like, um, obviously, mindfulness courses, uh, Tai Chi and yoga, and also the creative subjects. 
even subjects like photography give you an opportunity to sort of take a snapshot in time um, in the moment so you can be very much in the moment here and now with, with a, a subject and there's opportunities here to do so. So first question for you guys is just about you know well-being as a concept and how might you as colleges um, have also tried to do this yourselves. Um, just switch to, to this question here. So to ask you about the opportunities um, for you. So this project asking you what opportunities has your project given to embed well-being into your college? What kind of things, much like I showed there, have you been doing that also worth us sharing with each other? And I've got these little chat heads here, these little bubbles, and I can put things into them and save the file and get it back out to you again. So over to you the floor. I think I will do this through the um, manage participants window, I believe. And I've got you all on unmute. So someone wants to say something verbally, if you could do a raise hand, please. You could do a raise hand. And then where I can then bring you into your uh, speaking. And if you want to type in chat, you can do so as well. It's free from the chat window. Just click on the chat window at the top and you can just type stuff in. So I'd love to hear some of the ideas from you, from you guys. I want me to bring them in over here. I'm just looking for a raise hand. She had I see the raise hand. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, bring the chat up. Someone there? Is that Nadine? Yes, yes, that's me. Hello. Uh, Hello. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I was rising, raising my hand or not there, but no, uh, hi there. Yeah. Great. Um, well, for us, the project um, has given us the opportunity to spread the mental health agenda through our um, tutors and our staff. And yeah. it's, it's been amazing how, man, how many staff members have participated to some of the courses that have been that's offered. Good. That's a good area. I mean, that's, that's something to worth, worth sharing in terms. How did you engage yes. your staff with, with the project? What methods did you use to do uh, that? We use several methods, you know, the normal team meetings, the staff meeting in, in September, and one-to-ones and, you know, all sorts of uh, different methods for that. That's good. So your staff actually felt comfortable with coming on the courses and then yes. We said, yeah, we certainly have noticed a difference and, and some of the tutors were um, maybe a bit scared or daunted, but that is, there's a lot more confidence now amongst the staff. That's really, really good. I mean, yeah, getting staff involved with the project is crucial yeah. to it being successful, really. Yes. Okay, so I've got here something from, I will type, thank you so much for that. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it, Nadine. Um, anyone else may, may wish to speak, you can unmute yourself. Um, from here, you can just click on your name and do an unmute, and if you wish to speak, I'm going to let you do so. And I've got some, someone can't find the raise hand here. So, maybe hi, yeah, that's me. It's Debbie. Hi, Debbie speaking. Well hi. Um, yeah, I can't find it at the bottom of my screen, but, but never mind. Um, I was particularly um, pleased to see that you use the five ways to well being because we, mm. we do the same. Right. And, and during our tutor training, we actually. Um, gave the tutors um, ways of actually embedding um, uh, embedding it into their lessons without the um, the students actually being aware that it was there and um, then it was it was taken forward from that point on but the embedding is also is a thing isn't it it's trying to get things in that they're much more transparent and just part of what we do generally you know in our curriculum that's the thing to think about is how can you just make it part of what we normally do I'm yes. sure it's health and well-being is much more uh, an agenda at the moment. There's ways of doing it in a very subtle way that makes people feel they're just taking part in something that's good for them. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it goes through now into our community learning provision. Um, yeah. And we, we're actually finding that, that um, this has become a, a sort of a general thing that we, that, that we look after people's well-being mm. as well as their learning. So, okay. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank That's really you. Useful. Some good comments coming in now from Rachel Garrett, talking about the use of recovery language sessions for the workforce and using that language and terminology is um, helping people to just follow here. Is raising awareness in the college. Um, I've got a comment here also from uh, Marianne Fenny at Wamali um, about the tutor wellbeing support group. That sounds very interesting. That's something I think I might wish to follow up with you, Marianne, and find out more about that concept. Having something just for tutors only, which is a really fantastic idea. 
I think people involved with the project, very good. Um, part of the induction is mentioned by Claire Twall, um, and that's what we're doing with, with the Middlesbrough. Yes, Claire saying that to share resources. And Sarah Rafe is talking about some of the activities and she's showing there. So you guys can read through this text, there's some great stuff coming through on that. Um, Dos J S Sims is sending a private message to me, but you can also go public on that if there's a mistake on that one, but thank you for that. That's very, very useful also. I think tutor wellbeing support group is a good idea, something we can maybe follow up, I think. Um, think about that later on. So there's some great comments there. I've had so much back, I couldn't possibly fill my speech bubbles on the slide. So I'm gonna to need to move to the next one. <laughs> hopefully Katina's there furiously writing away uh, somewhere and hopefully this whole thing's been recorded so we can keep all of that. Thank you everyone for that. Oh, look at that, there you go. Marianne might want to volunteer on the next webinar on tutor wellbeing. How about that, Marianne? Sound good? Katina's right, one of those coaches, you'll watch you do something really good and you're like, I want you. You're on my, you're on my team. This is, this is what we do as teachers, isn't it? Good stuff. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Referral process. Right, the referral process, the dreaded referral process. Okay, here it is. So the referral process. This is, um, I put the slide, you guys all see the slide again, I hope. You're all back with me. So how it works with us is we have the um, individuals who are identified by the partner organization, those partners that you saw on the slide previously on my mosaic there, that identify themselves with those symptoms, either come from the partnership and the partnership makes the referrals. The learner's basically given some information about us by the partner, they're given some of our initial forms, and they're securely brought across to us with that learner themselves to us, to our coordination team over here. I work, uh, I'm working, fortunately, with a project coordinator who's already got the skill set and worked with mental health before, and um, she's very good at keeping people on, on track and um, welcoming in new, new learners into the project and giving them that first initial one-to-one um, -one IAG, which is really crucial. And we're sort of seeing at the moment it's about two thirds self referral and one third through partnerships. This is kind of the thing at the moment, and I'll look at it again when I do my December return and see how it's changed as time's gone on. We're trying to recover our self referral um, much more, um, trying to look at that much more carefully. I think this is where we've got people who are not diagnosed coming in through that route, who don't really want to go for a diagnosis or form a diagnosis, and want to just sort of get well with what's going on with them. And I think this is quite key for us because this is our preventative health strategy. We're trying to get people well before they actually get unwell through the medical systems. Obviously, in terms of you know, budgetary constraints, that is really where we want to be focusing as colleges, where our mission really is, is sort of making that happen. Um, provision is offered in community outreach, outreach settings also. We have to sometimes go out and do things. Sometimes I get this challenge where a particular centre wants this session really badly. It can't work with our curriculum teachers over here. They can't come out because it's too far away. The bus routes don't work. We've got to get on the mission and get onto the bus, you know, and get there ourselves and deliver something on site. So that's something we've had to do to meet those hard to reach people. And that's often just a taster or maybe a session if it develops from that point. Um, all learners can come through a number of routes. They either can do a short taster, they can come to one of our events also where we cross refer onto the project or have a one-to-one -one advice and guidance session with our, our coordination team, my coordinator. Okay, so going further from that, let's talk about some of our courses. This is a kind of what we all do as colleges. So we have like a, something called a wellbeing course guide at the college, and um, this course guide is um, got our kind of our five ways to wellbeing little bullet points on the front of that, and it kind of features some of the courses that are more specialised um, around the project. So when we did our bid, this is the kind of areas we went for. Uh, you can see art and craft, building confidence, exercise and dance. Yoga Tai Chi, healthy eating and cookery using tech and creative writing. In a short while, I'm going to ask you about, you know, about what you guys are doing in your provision, sort of the ideas you've had. I just want to give a bit of a spotlight on a couple of things um, for this provision, first of all. The first useful bit of information is uh, what I did on a bit of Excel yesterday and a pivot table. It's useful what that stuff can do is just looking at what is the range of participation on some of those courses, what's popular and what's not, or what's most popular. Then look at some of the top up courses for mental health, some of our provision there and a specialism around sort of courses for carers, that key group of people who are there between us and that service user with a diagnosis, that carer is that person that makes all the difference and how we contribute and give CPD and development to that person is crucial to their support. So um, over to the next slide, which is our kind of like data sheet. There you go, there's nothing amazing here, but it's useful stuff. So we've got here kind of where, where people are going to on this particular project in terms of percentages. I've just gone for the top eight to give us a focus. So I've got here the course area of well-being and mental health top ups at the top there, that's ranking number one. That's trending, we can say, at the top there, the um, top ups. 
And below that is the mindfulness, tai chi, and yoga classes that are very popular using technology. And this is a bit of a double-edged sword really with us because some people in the project are very anxious to use technology entirely. They've got some real concerns about it and we don't want to make people obviously worse. So when we've, we've got a, um, a concept around doing a course around just getting over the anxiety of technology in a very kind of gentle way around security and using iPads to begin with in a closed environment and then gradually moving them up um, using technology more confidently. Um, craft has been very popular too, um, ceramics and jewelry. And again, more in the art there is painting and drawing also as a whole sort of stream of stuff, exercise and creative writing and also music. So see the kind of main things that come across. You've got your top ups, you've got your mindfulness stuff, you've got technology as a skill. Size um, also is, is a big part of this. Now onto the um, actual top up courses, the top one of the most popular, let's zoom in on that one. So let's go into that in more detail. This shows you the kind of stuff we've developed with our uh, recovery college partnership. This is, we first set out developing quite large chunky courses with them and we had like quite long, like six week or eight weekers. This is a kind of like the start of the pilot and then um, some of them were eight weeks long and some of them were also using the words diagnosis in them. When we reflected on a course called an understanding a diagnosis of depression, we just felt that the word diagnosis is better, better best left out of um, some of these course titles. We really want to use these courses to engage all people who may be undiagnosed or not wanting to diagnose medically or those who are also with diagnosis. Just want to get everyone in. So we decided to change our titling and take the word diagnosis out and also split up our large courses into smaller segments that are much more one-offs. That doesn't require therefore ongoing heavy commitments. It lightens the surveying also greatly. It makes it lighter to survey on to touch the survey. We can get more effective outcomes by them coming on to the other courses from us via these we can get the surveying done in context to the subject. So that's really what I want to try and get an understanding of. For example, if I come onto a taster, there's obviously an impact there, the start and end of the session, how good I feel, something to measure. If I come onto a five week ceramics course, and I'm surveying and learning at the start and at the end, of like the course, I might want to see exactly which areas they improved on. For example, did all my ceramics learners get an improvement in confidence specifically, or around something around self-esteem and value? If something is occurring there, that means that when I do my next referral in IAG, there's some sort of correlation between my scoring, the types of things people are giving you know, attention to on the PHQ9 GAD7 and the actual course I should be referring them to. I believe Learn to Be is doing a model like this also, um, the one in Northamptonship. So there you go, there's an example of some of the types of course we've got uh, there. We've got one on Christmas, I'll look at that one in a minute. Uh, intro to recovery, stress management, they're all very generic titles I and mean, you can imagine getting this out there to all people and I just spoke to my IT class last night I've got a Cisco class of IT students and we do network and I said look guys you know what you're IT people you're going to stay staying up late is a standard part of our kind of like DNA we do this stuff but you've got to be aware of the kind of consequences of it and one of the guys was there yawning away in my class looking knackered I said look why don't you think about one of my well-being courses and it was an easy thing to talk about with them and sort of open up and discussion on sleep is something we can all, all relate to so there you go there's a feel for our some of our top-up courses there now going on, um, this is a Christmas session we've got coming up in a couple of weeks. So dealing with Christmas, um, it is often obviously a very positive time for many people, but it can be hard for some others. We want to make this something we can pull out to people uh, in terms of opportunities and support. And there's uh, some course content there about um, the kind of things we're covering on that. Okay, so um, over to you, interaction time everyone, uh, keeping you awake and alert. So which courses are you finding have been the most popular effective for you and any particular client groups? Anything you'd like to share on that? We'd love great to hear your experience on that um, and what's happening. I'll bring up my raise hands thing again. Check up. So if you wish to speak, you unmute yourself, I believe. Hi, Hi we've unmuted ourselves here in Portsmouth. Oh. Because Great. Linda wants to say something. Linda. This is important because normally she's on the phone and can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, very, we found that Play With Clay has been incredibly um, successful. People have been very keen on that. And also the arts and crafts that we've been running have been really useful as well. Right. So arts and crafts for you, are they, um, are they the sorts of things that we have, like jewellery and ceramics? Do you have other things as well? The mix, it, it covers lip balms, um, bath oh. bombs, jewellery making, lino printing. It's an ongoing course yeah. which covers a number of different areas. And lots of short courses rather than long ones or a mixture? 
we've we've got a bit of a mixture, but mostly we're just trying to get tasters up and running. Yeah, you see, this is crucial, isn't it? T tasters and short courses are the ones I think that are the ones that are useful for engagement. Yeah, and then we've got long courses booked for January. Longer ones for January that are more more developing, developing. Great. So you've got like a taster model, and you're going on to longer courses. Very good. Thank you, Portsmouth. Um, I've got some coming in now on the chat here. And if anyone was supposed to say something verbally, you're welcome to share the microphone. Maybe Portsmouth want to say some more. Looking quite animated over there. <laughs> um, and further down, we've got a, other, other providers want to maybe say something on the microphone. And got a lot coming from the chat right now. Just read out. Uh, I've got here, um, DOSJ Sims is giving through here confidence communication skills. Very good. Um, meditation and mindfulness. Fun with clay, time for art. If you want an extension on their courses, very good. Tai Chi, photography, uh, visits to local parks. Yeah, getting out in nature is a, is a good one. Local, getting involved with your local community and your local environment, that's a, a great thing, actually. We certainly should be doing much more of that, looking at that. Arts on prescription, so working with IAP is very good. With an art activity and mental health topic, there's something you guys could take away with you, with your local IAPs. Confidence building, yoga as five weeks, very good. Drama for confidence, Dan Shercliffe. And um, food, mood, healthy eating. Anything is possible. That's a good title. It's great stuff, there, Tina, isn't it? It's good stuff. We're getting back from this. Thank you for that. Books on prescription. There's a great lots of good stuff coming back from that. So I think if you can all see each other's chat there, chat stream, you could probably pick up quite a lot of ideas to take away with you. If you're planning for January, February, March, and year two, hopefully. Those of you who are going there also. Okay, a good comment from Marie there on art for well-being and the importance of the impact of that course. Very good. So, um, thank you for that bit of interaction there. I'm going to move forward. Check on my timing as well. It's now one o'clock. Right, so on to the next stage. On to our events program. So I mentioned that. Um, with the colleges we are set up at the moment, is trying to get this project concept of well-being, mental well-being, out to the general public and how to do it. So our events program is an integral part of our project. Um, we use our events to sort of cross-pollinate effectively and cross-promote the project and also to sort of destigmatize the um, self-consciousness around those who want to declare and also those who want to, and also to sort of be aware of um, catching people early with situated symptoms and some of our events you'll see are kind of pretty much around that concept so here's an example of some of our um, events coming up that have either gone in November or December um, so let's talk about these so we had one called breathe to begin with the mindfulness presentation it was a very scientific presentation see my pictures there there's on the bottom left hand side our trainer with a student who was strapped to like a not strapped to a chair but effectively with a kind of a breathing apparatus connected to her which had a monitoring of the um, respiration rate. And because we took a very scientific approach to it all, um, kind of making it very open to all people, people could see very clearly the correlation between thinking stressful thoughts and actually the breathing rate and capacity of it. And when the person thought happy thoughts, the respiration sort of relaxed and calmed down, and, and it was different for those sort of stressful thoughts. And that's a way of us being able to sort of talk about mindfulness as a concept, as being a scientific concept also and uh, being a non-secular thing where everyone can connect to it uh, and, and access it. And um, the te teacher, there's our tai chi, tai chi teacher, actually, who did that session for me, and that, that was very good and popular. And that then gives us a chance to then cross-refer and talk about other things. We've also got one on technology and overcoming the kind of fear around it called Get Connected, and you've got on the bottom and right-hand side over there, and that particular image is one of our teachers helping out a student to use an iPad for the first time. And that's a big part of technology and just overcoming the, those kind of like, you know, overcoming your fears and your kind of stigmas around it and it's coming forward uh dry try ballroom taster and this is a lovely ballroom image there people coming and trying out a ballroom for the first time this is so many so such a warm thing really being able to sort of work on touch with people learn about the movement the kind of gracefulness of ballroom and the musical so there's lots in that you can you can get and finally one is very important to us sing for peace is a multicultural christmas concert um, we're doing in the college at the end of the year Luckily, students on the project themselves are actually part of this project, which is great. They're singing, they're part of a choir we built, and they're going to take part and be a uh, kind of joint-funded project for the borough and to get people onto this sort of a nice choir concert night later on this month. So there's some events there. 
I can then move on to the um, events question for all of you. So you might have thought of some events. Um, you might wish to talk, maybe just type some in chat right now. So again, is it a, sh a sort of sharing thing about events you guys might have thought of? So I'd be up for kind of hearing about your events ideas and thoughts. These are public events people can come to. Um, they may be in partnership with other providers, uh, NHS, etc. One of the ones that you've, you've dreamed up yourself, you know, that's how events begin, <laughs> as ideas. So just a few funny kind of events you've thought of, if you just really type them into the chat stream. Or on voice, up for, up for either of those things. Oh, great to see another choir. This is the time of year, isn't it? From Debbie Hall, singing for well-being. Very good. As if December is the time for this sort of thing. Pre-Christmas info sharing event. This is an information awareness. Oh yes, we had World Mental Health Day, brilliant. Uh, coffee mornings, great. And looking at tasters, I mean, January is a great time for tasters, isn't it, everyone? For having, having something in January just as a half a session, um, half a day uh, session or a couple of hour sessions in January, start of the term, nice thing to come into just as you're kind of getting warmed up to get in, involved with other things. Very good, so any more things people just type in um, as I continue on? I'm going to try and keep to my time, as, as I've been told, <laughs> right? And I'm going to now talk about the um, provision for learners with LVD. So this area here, um, as I mentioned to you before, we have partnerships with them. Um, RHLT is one of our partnerships, and they run activities for learners with moderate to severe learning or physical disabilities. And we wanted to get a more focused project around these learners to, to get them engaged, like all the other students are in mainstream too. So we created a four session taster program using technology, it was again iPads, relaxation, art, music and drama. And we looked at our bit of thinking, right, how are we can get the surveying done? This is the first challenge, you know, looking at the surveying. And we sort of spoke to the um, coordinator here, um, one of our very eff efficient coordinators, Teresa at the college, about how we can organize this. And she sort of looked at the surveys and me and thought, right, you know what, we should just ask less questions. You know, we're still gonna get some data. Let's try and focus on those questions that are ones that are going to be meaningful and going to make sense to the most number of learners in this room. Because the key thing is, is this com communication here. How are we going to get these learners to communicate to us how they feel, you know, depending on whatever their, their conditions are, and their circumstances are. So we set about setting this full taster session and every learner was given an interview and we chose those questions that we felt were on the survey were the most appropriate. And we'd be willing, happy to share this with other, other pilot providers and, and partners to see how we did this. So I'd like to share it and get out there so you also can engage with these learner groups too. Um, so this course was to help them understand these concepts first. Well, what does happiness mean you know, in terms of own definitions of them? Stress, what is self-esteem and self-confidence? And I remember doing one of my very early interviews with Alain Valdi, how she told me about how she felt about herself. And that really touched me in terms of me thinking, right, you know, I need to think about how we can get them to communicate self-esteem to us so we can provide this provision that's going to make a difference and, and be more focused. So then, again, improving the communication is a key part of this and so they can connect with others. And that is going well so far. And um, I think the concepts are going well. Every week we're doing kind of little review of the scores and it's going in the upward trend. You know, we're, we're seeing a very good kind of response in, in the sessions, just at the start and at the end of the sessions and how learners are um, in them. And then um, just take a certain specific skill set and being able to be, build that rapport up, you know, and, and get that kind of like, you know, energy moving in the class so people are active and, and you know, engaged with, with what they want from it. So, um, on to, from that to getting involved further, this is the, um, on to the, the co-production aspects of our, of our project. Um, again, trying to involve all learners is a key part of this. This is by learners with LVD, those from, you know, ethnic minorities, um, also getting more male representation on course was, was quite challenging and important for us. So, involvement for us is also about learners having a say in the project and, you know, driving things themselves. So, I mean, we encourage learners to have, we have learner forums at the college. This is one of our events too. We run different types of learner forum. So our learner forums are done, um, we run them every sort of six weeks or so, and we had one recently where we got some questions out to our learners and asked them some open things. So they give us an opportunity to give us some, some views back um, on what they think about the project and the courses they're on and also what they're getting out of it, which is often hard to capture. The project has opportunities to volunteer and an accredited um, training program to develop peer mentors. So we've got small wellbeing opportunities, volunteering, and also then those that go on then can become peer mentors too and help other students come in and get orientated in the college. Um, our first tranche of our peer mentoring training finished in December, finishing around now. 
and our first set of volunteers hope to go live from January onwards. Kind of things they'll be doing is helping out with events, you know, doing more events and helping out events are a really fun thing to get involved with. Uh, you can do meet and greet, you can meet lots of people, you can get very specific focused tasks and you do, it's a great feeling to get involved with something so social and that has impact. Helping to support classes and other learners, you know, staying on, some learners do courses, have been doing a couple of courses, you know, and doing a few other courses together as groups and those learners we've helped to try to get them to move on and add value back to the class by just becoming volunteers in some way, support, supporting the teacher, maybe taking a more um, proactive role in maybe being the learner voice because they're more established. And that really helps some of the new learners come in too, who are less experienced and less and much more new to the college. And one around making a, a film around well-being as a concept in adult education and stepping stones to well-being, the film is something we're doing here. Um, and so one of our students is volunteering to do that, which, which is great. Um, again, becoming peer mentors. And later on then also getting these skills is going back to their own local communities and helping out in the partnerships that they originally were referred from or in their own localities. And that's something we'd really like to see happen. Some of the quotes from our learner forum. Um, these are a learner forum we had about maybe a few weeks ago. We just let you read those things there. And I just will say a couple of those things. Um, one is around, I think I'll say the top one, there's about someone saying, we're learning something new which we haven't had the opportunity to do when we were younger or through our working lives. Uh, and as we all know, as adult education people, we know that some students have had a difficult start in education often and um, not a very positive experience in some cases. So it's great to have them get back into the learning bug um, you know, later on in life, so they can get to something they're interested in and they can, they can take further. Some things you can read there also about, you know, ring making, being therapeutic and the five ways to well-being. But I want to talk about the enrollment process too, because we mustn't forget our, our colleagues in business support also and what they need to also, you know, the things they have to also work on. And there's a comment here from them saying that they felt the enrollment process was very personalised and they felt they were treated like as individuals. And I think this is probably one of the beneficial part of this project is that Learners are coming on leisure courses where they're actually being spoken to by someone, okay? And um, these are short courses that are, you know, often skills-based. They get an interview, they, they do the survey and assessment, and in a way that's a personalization around that, that gives them a more effective and specific assignment. Okay, um, project process. So this is a bit about progress now and how we're doing on the project overall. And then we're gonna come back to some interactive stuff from you guys again and you get a chance to also chat. Um, so some of our kind of early insights from project, we kind of set around roughly about the baseline of 500 target learners was our rough kind of our modeling, what we're looking at here. And end of November, we're at approximately 200 at the moment. Given the events going on in December and other activities, I think we could probably hit about 250 or so, given where we're at right now. And it's been quite transparent around this because we, Katina and me talked about this, about this sharing this information with you all in terms of how we're doing. We just have felt that, you know, we've got to obviously get quality behind what we do. This is very important. Quality outcomes are crucial for us. So we've kind of had to build capacity a bit as we go along and learn as we go along too and be organic with how we understand the kind of flow um, the experience learners go through. So um, there's 40 different courses here. That's how many learners we've got engaged at the moment and we've got some more work to do in January to March. But again, our, our focus is going to be around getting the quality back and doing a very good self-assessment. I think now and, and just evaluating what we do because we are very positive about year two and, and going further with that all being well. So um, some things that I think to focus on going ahead we want to do much more as you said today is more specific single taster sessions, specific groups through joint targeting. That's a starting point for many of the learners here. So EG I did a managing anxiety workshop with RB Mine. I did that on site there um, in the venue itself. Um, scoring, so we look at some of our scores already and analyze them. We've seen some dramatic improvements in scoring on some of our specialist courses. There's a, a 35% improvement in the scoring there in the right direction in CAD 7 PHQ 9s. Also in one-off interventions, massive improvements where students have done a particular activity together, you know, as a small one-off taster. And we've actually done a Warwick scale there, start, end of the session, and they do feel more useful perhaps at the end of that session or more. Um, or more kind of connected to others just by taking part in that very one-off class. So we can't understate the value of one-off interventions in this project. That They do need to be tracked and monitored as much as they can be. Um, looking ahead here, looking at more shorter provision and more frequent to get wider participation. These courses are going to be kind of a bouncing point going into other courses in the college. We've got other things going on here they can come on to that are longer as well and more specialized once they find their way and then going into outreach to reach specific and existing learner groups with a, a well-being menu of, uh, of short courses so it's taking those things out there like I'm going to be talking to the children's centers today about going out there and do something for the parents and even the children's center staff are under a lot of pressure themselves uh, to try and get some of the well-being agenda out there in those 
our local five wards uh, in the, um, Richmond here. So um, lessons learned <laughs> so far. This is one of many things I could share with you, right? I could probably do a whole webinar on lessons learned if I had the time for it. So I want to talk about some of the things coming up. So it's quite a text heavy slide here. I want just to give you the detail. So I mean, some of our learner group does require appropriate, sufficient attention, okay, and patience when they're being processed as going through the project, which means the interviewing has got to be done thoroughly and carefully at the start of the project. We've got to be methodical about that. This is not like a, a big flow sort of, you know, batch processing thing. We've got to be personalized about this. And the enrolling and administration experience has got to also be positive, and that requires streamlining. Some learners come in at a busy peak time in college and in big queues. We've got to think about, can we make systems more efficient? We've had to just review some of the enrollment processes to make them much more streamlined, which then helps other learners too in the college. This is also a benefit, benefit, benefit of the project, actually. Um, giving appropriate resource for admin and surveying elements of the project, and I think that needs more focus uh, for us as well in terms of time allocated to it realistically. I remember doing the first return myself in September and what was involved in that hands-on even the little trips to the post office to get that bag out there for the Ipsos surveys, you've got to factor all those things in. And the idea is just to get you know, good quality data requires we're going to focus on looking at this data ourselves. And they're not, this data is not in a SAR format for us, an SAR format or QIP format or our usual MIS. This is different data for us. So aggregating and analyzing it is something we need to give some attention to. What's it showing us? Um, and then again, embedding things into existing college systems. I mean, some things work in a very specialized way where you know, that's where it's most effective, where you've got the management, the teachers, the admin support staff, all working in a very specialised way against a particular course. That's well being focused. But also, where possible, embedding into existing college systems. So, for example, our learner forum was an embedded part of our normal forums that we have at the college. And that's obviously got best practice in there and already the skill set is, is very developed. So that's some of my, some of my many lessons learned, okay, on the project. So maybe if I open, open out to the floor again here, if you can maybe one, one, one short, share their pain <laughs> or, the, or, their kind of, or their gains, should we say from sharing their um, experiences. And I'm sure that any lesson learned is something you know, helpful for all of us um, here, here today. Over to you, and those who want to go to voice can be unmuted again. Um, they can unmute themselves or they can type on the chat. Yes, yeah, so any lessons learned from you or things that you're finding, you might wish to echo some of the things I've said. Um, there about the um, embedding of stuff for um, appropriate resources for people. So you stand there giving me an echo on Dan Church Dan Fields where I'm at on that one, on the resource for admin. Oh, it's texting, that's a really good point. That's a very really good point um, from Robson C there. I think I've got someone coming on voice now. Who's that there? Hi, it's Caroline from Barnsley. Karen, hello, how are you? Hi, oh. fine, thank you. Um, I find it really interesting what you're saying about um, the LDD groups that you're using and yeah. the surveys that you're, you're using, because mm. that would be really interesting because I'm working with several groups and, yeah. um, and I've just sort of started trying to do the assessments and finding it a real difficulty. So it'd be really good to see which, which questions you've chosen to use with them. Sure. So it'd be great if you could share that with us. Happy to do so. So I have Tina See, Katina might advise on the method for it. So I've got Katina, come on, yes. I can't, you know, when you're co-host, you don't get a raise hand. It's ridiculous. Oh, you just did that. I saw you that. <laughs> raise hand. Uh, <laughs> actually, on Wednesday, whatever day we had the um, intelligence gathering group meeting, finally, mm. IAP sent me the new stuff. Oh. So you two will be top of my list to email that to you um, when the I'm... Survey, I see. They, they've defined their survey, have they? They've defined a, a method for this. Yeah, and, so. and, and also their kind of guidance that sits around it. So we've got a okay. copy of the draft. So I will send that to you and anybody else that wants it, let me know. Not via sure. the forums because they're still not working, but just email yeah. me and I'll send it out to you and then I'll post it on the website at the weekend. Okay. Oh, um, that's, just, thank you. that's fine. Just a question, Katina, on that. Is that is it, we've actually done this thing where we've sort of customised the survey just to make it simpler for ourselves. Is that still okay in the pilot? <laughs> No, not really, but I think we'll live with it for year one, okay? Mm. <laughs> but only for LLDD. Sure. Yes, sure, sure, sure. I'm prepared to live Just with it. Learning year, is important. year two, we will have to use whatever is the, you know, the, and what I wouldn't want to do is that group sure. of learners. Well, look, we'll, we'll take what, um, I'll be a good boy, we'll take, we'll take what you send, we'll send us. Me and Karen are nodding our heads there. We'll, we'll take what you send us and we'll work with that. We'll just look at that carefully. But So I can share what's been done so far with Caroline if she wants to see. Absolutely, yeah, please do. 
Okay, um, so I've got here comments from Marie here. So texting is a good comment coming forward, first of all. Texting students before the start of the course, a great idea. Very simple thing also that can be set up. Something called text tools. If your IT teams could look at that, they could look at integrating that. Or they get like a, a package of texting and then they can do that. Okay, got That's an unmute here for Portsmouth. Hello, Portsmouth. We also text our learners. We, we write letters to them before courses. Um, right. Say it doesn't always work. We sent out mm. letters the other week and two, two of our learners turned up. And that was the night before having texts and five agreed they will be there. But unfortunately, it's mm. the two. <laughs> I see. See, that's no, good. So that's something you're also using It's working to some extent. That's good. Just a comment here on, um, thank you, Paul Smith. Comment here on... Um, for Marie here about the co-hosting, co-facilitating. So our recovery college courses, the ones they, they offer, those managing mental health ones, are all with two trainers, actually. And um, like in the college here, obviously, we have normally one teacher per class, but this is an interesting concept of having co-facilitation. They ran us a train-the-trainer session. We did this thing about, we talked about how co-facilitation works. And what Marie's saying is, is having this two trainers, so there's signposting and also learners can come out. If things are much more emotive as topics, having someone there on, on site, um, to help with those things as it arise in the class, just help when the class needs to continue going on and it keeps things moving along. Learner then can come back when they feel ready to do so or otherwise. Very useful, Marie. Uh, Dan Shercliffe, uh, more success in outreach centres. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We find also in community outreach that people say to us that the college is intimidating. They've got this idea of us being big further education building, brick buildings with lots of regulation and admin on them. Who knows why on earth they've got that impression, where they've got that from. Now, this is something that's happened over time. So to try and make that happen, one thing we, we thought about doing is, is trying to take out the college to the venue. So you've obviously the teacher goes out, but also taking those photographs of the college with us too, our prospectus, uh, to taking with us also, taking with us also um, things like a little video of the college, like a little three, four minute video trailer, just what the college is about. So they can sort of meet the principal, hear the principal's talk, talk about, see some of the venues and spaces. That does make a difference. But yeah, it is a stage by stage process to get that over intimidation and working through it. Um, question about dedicated project management. Yeah, I can certainly appreciate that. It's a really good point. Having someone to oversee it and have it a central point of management does really help. Um, with self-referral, um, how, how they make sure they're only mild to moderate. So Debbie has mentioned here, how are we doing this? So with self-referral, again, Debbie, this is again using the assessment forms. We're using the PHQ9 GAD7 for that one. We look at that particular survey scoring result and that's how we make the decision based on where they're at in terms of mild, very mild, mild to moderate, or moderate to higher. We then we've got to look at also further signposting and support. Can uh, I just, could I yeah. just, just come, um, ask you about that? Please. So do you um, give them the assessments before you actually enroll them onto the course? Hmm, that's right. I mean, they come for a advice and guidance session, first of all, and they're told about what the project's about, what it entails. So they go through a um, more detailed kind of like one-to-one, -one, and then we do the surveying to begin with. That's what happens on the, in terms of the kind of regulation requirements, on pressure survey, on those sessions that are longer than just one-offs, okay? Where mm -hmm. they're kind of like the more rigorous or the more focused sessions. Yeah. That's what those things. Good idea, good idea. It does take time to do it properly, then you've got to really sort of think about how you resource that because it's something yeah. that needs to go through. Yeah. Um, and then it's coming at once, you know, that, that can happen if it's very popular. So you've got to sort of streamline that so it's staggered um, and it's time to actually manage that properly. Did you, did you find it difficult to actually manage that? There were times when the queuing was a problem initially when we had the coordinator with lots of people in the queue and that was a challenge, you know, that, that does happen mm -hmm. sometimes where mm -hmm. there were certain bottlenecks that occur for just college cycle, cyclical things that happen here. So we just have to evaluate it. We've got to ask learners, you know, if something's happened where we thought the coordinator feels quite pressurized by the, the queuing, what's gone on? Then we need to think about, we refine it and we think about maybe more staff being available at the same time to give a bit of relief. So having a backup person to call up on the phone, come down please, I'm a bit overwhelmed right now. Another person turns up to help out. That's really what's been helpful, capacity to support peak times and busy times. Thank you. Okay, other questions. Thank you, Debbie. Other questions here from other people coming in, um, people talking about the webinars and how useful they've been. Um, Robinson C, turning people away. Um, it's just done very carefully with discretion. It turns on the nature of the session and what the course is about, I'd say, Robinson, on that one. Um, multi moderate scores are looked at. Um, if they're very, very mild, what we've actually done in some cases is refer them to another bursary, which is more about relating to their needs. It could be income might be the factor there. So we also have another bursary around income here that we can access. 
um, for different types of activity. Um, but we, yeah, again, as Marie's saying, as a, we don't really have a, a kind of a, a protocol of turning people away. We don't really want, I think they've come a long way for us. And sometimes it has been some examples where the score hasn't been very high and yet actually they've got other situations going and you think, hang on a minute, the scoring is not reflecting your actual experience. That then needs to be looked into more detail. Is their ability to actually understand the questions is another part of it and how they're getting them right. Um, yeah, sure, Karen's saying it's been hard to get one-to-one -one for all learners. That, that has been challenging. Maybe Karen could go into maybe why that is the case. Um, the one-to-one -one sessions is a taster. No, we don't actually. We don't claim it as a taster session, but it's a good point. I mean, something we could think about. Just see what maybe the project evaluation team think about that. It's not something we do at the moment. I think for the one-to-ones is more IAG. It's a separate intervention for us uh, before they actually go into the um, session. So we don't actually claim it as that. Question from Katina to all there about your offer. So is your mainstream offer available for people who are not eligible? That's right, so for people who want, that's right. I wish to say something on that. So if you have got someone who's not on the project, who's not meeting the scoring level, you've got a mainstream offer there. Obviously as a college, you've got lots going on. There, there you go. So there's obviously, uh, Caroline's mentioned that there's options there for that. Oh, I like this. Bye. Oh, hello. The Novo YT3 X50F is on the microphone there. So if someone's out there, I can just see them. The Novo YT3, hello. And she's saying, is it me? Yes, it's you. <laughs> this happens on videos. No, we did that. The microphone's turned on. I see the Novo there. I've got a, yeah, the Novo, do you want to say something? No, we did that by accident. Sorry. Oh, no, problem, no problem. You're, you're welcome. No problem. You can type, type in something. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for joining us anyway. Yes, you've got community learning courses, obviously. You've got a community learning allocation, which then you can use for some of that work. Okay, so everyone did say I'll try to finish on good time. Um, I hope that uh, this has been a good session for you and, and helpful and valuable also from the peer support you've had. And uh, hopefully more opportunities like this in the future that Katina is going to organize and, and pick you out for. Some of you have had some good ideas today. Don't be surprised if she follows you up with a little email saying, come and do a webinar for me. <laughs> All right, so over to you now the next screen, which is the keeping in touch. This is my details here. Staying connected and doing the, my own five ways to well-being here. So if you want to be well, you can keep in touch with me. Maybe I'll give you some help too. Um, here's my details. So project manager, the well-being project. Here's my landline number there and my email address. You can get me by the well-being at rack address. Easy one to remember. And there's our project page um, on that also. I'm here for a few minutes now. And some of my colleagues are going to be setting up around me for a room meeting we're having shortly, but I'm going to be here for a bit. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I'll be here for a few minutes now. Ten minutes for chat and advice and you to get a cup of tea or whatever else you'd like to have beverage wise. Um, so I'll be here for chat and voice. So feel free to ask questions and just for an informal chat. Um, thank you very much. It's been, it's been good doing this. I hope to be doing this again in the future. So into chat mode now. Uh, let's find out my chat screen. I'm so pleased my, my Wi-Fi worked today. My first, <laughs> yeah. No worries, it's fine, Karen. It's right, right. Uh, I'm pleased my Wi-Fi work today. Uh, it's all gone well. And um, Zoom, I would say, I would certainly say Zoom is really good software, because you know, it's really good. I've used Skype before. I've used all sorts of things. Google Hangouts, this is wipes it away uh, for simplicity. It's a free software. Us education people love free things. You know, and I was, just found it really easy to use. So very good for that. It's a big learning curve for me, learning Zoom for the first time. I think I can take this back with to the college with other things we could do with training on workforce development. We have to thank WA and Northern College for introducing me. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Northern. Um, we've got a question here from Paul. Yeah, please. Well, question. Can I ask you a question? Hi. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Interested whether you run your um, wellbeing courses out of a recovery college or whether you are a, a standalone um, educational establishment? It's a really interesting scenario um, with us. With actually, so We are firstly a standalone adult education provider. We've been a college for many, many years. And as it happens, the Recovery College used to hire space with us some years back, just use our venue for, as a hosting space. That's something we'll try to continue anyway. So just this project has enabled us to reconnect with Recovery College after our refurbishment. I mentioned the build works we had last year and before that. So 
had a space again that they can access they can do the courses here but because of the project we've been able to sort of harness them as a partnership to provide these specialist courses on top up again the idea though is for staff ourselves to build up those skills themselves i mean we're colleges i think we now need to get into that space of delivering those courses ourselves what are the skills around those finding those people with lived experience who are teachers in the college who will now come forward and teach these topics uh, looking at those sessions from recovery college, i think we can do this stuff you know i think we as colleges can do this stuff we can form this middle world between education and, and, and medical services. Yeah, I mean, um, here in Portsmouth, we have um, local, if you use a hybrid college, um, but we have their, their building, um, but we find it's mm. quite interesting. Uh, it reframes their identity. They have the same experience as any other student. Mm, They're no longer ex-service yeah. user or ex-patient. They're, they're walking mm. in um, reception the same as any other student would but we also involve yes, adult mental health staff and Excellent. trainers mm. and they co-deliver um, so that students have that depth and that breadth as well doesn't it make a lot of sense um you're saying uh, your first name again sorry Lee, -E. Lee, Lee. does it make sense Lee? I mean, colleges to generally do kind of higher arrangements with their local IAPT and recovery colleges anyway it's a great idea you know those services need kind of like I'll say like lower dis discounted rates etc which colleges can sometimes do to give them access to bring these students onto site number one so they get used to the environment and it becomes less overwhelming and secondly then to do the partnership work which is creating those events and those tasted courses that bring people through that can cross refer both of those you know mental health services and also the adult, the adult education services too so it's a great model yeah it, it takes some of the fear out of it for students as well it's kind yes of, of course you're, you're a pair but you're mental health adult mental health so it kind of adult mental health give them the technical details but peers mm. relate to them so well actually no my experience was this or you know so it does it does i was just interested in how you uh what your connection was with recovery colleges so yeah so they are effectively just generally a, a partner of ours they're delivering courses for us as part of the project and we're commissioning them to do that Right. As, but with the outset of us building up our own capacity over this two-year plan to do it ourselves. Okay. And we've started doing some delivery ourselves already, some of our teachers are doing that, but it's just getting that ramped up so then we can take that part. Obviously, they'll still be doing their bit, but we need to do ours too because of locality issues and regional issues, right. getting enough coverage in the local, local area. Yeah. Thank you, Lee. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Question from a few people coming in on the chat here. I've got a um, thanks for the comments, everyone, today. Uh, it's great to see this. Um, and the support as well. Um, so some questions from people like I can see here, uh, Dan Shercliffe, um, when do you conduct the assessments we were attending for just for a one off day session? So actually, yes, we do those assessments at the start of the session, actually, if possible, before the session starts, we sort of time that in. And at the end of the session, they have a bit of IAG and advice and guidance after that for the next steps. So we try and manage that. I mean, it's challenging though, you've got to be quite coordinated about how you go about doing that and use the appropriate surveys uh, as you need to. Again, we only for the one day courses use the Warwick scale, but in some cases I've used the other surveys that are more specifically, e.g. an anxiety workshop for half a day, I'll use the, the GAD7 start and end um, for that one because it's just an appropriate scoring thing to look at. Um, okay, uh, I mentioned about supporters, I think this is support workers. Oh, there's a question that's coming private. So any private questions, if you could be emailed to me, that would be great. And I can look at those and come back to those ones. Uh, Dan, on where you've got most referrals from, we have said self is two thirds. Roughly, that's our ratio there. And partner is 33%. That's roughly our kind of balance at the moment. All partner. That's our rough uh, allocation at the moment. That's how it is when I last evaluated it. But I think it might change slightly. We're driving up much more self referrals, but at the same time doing much more partner work in the community. So. It could be anything when I look at it again. But it's that kind of where we, where we started from. Can any other questions or people, things people like to say or, or share? Uh, on voice or on chat? Give it just a couple of minutes, people to bring in anything else. So those on the voice system, either you unmute um, and come in and say something, or we will just close down for now. And um, okay, so thanks everyone. We've gone on good timing. So 135. Appreciate today's 
uh, you'll, you'll attend. So I'm going to wave at you all because I can see some of you people. Wave at you. It's, a, it's Marie there, I can see, and Dan Shercliff. It's very social, isn't it, this stuff? <laughs> so I can see some of you there. Whoever I can see, I'm going to wave at. Dan Shercliff and his team there. Oh, look at that, four people in one go. Look at that, crowdsourcing. <laughs> Um, it's good to meet you all and I hope we can do many more of these things together. Maybe I'll see you at one of these conferences that Christina's got lined up for us. <laughs> so thank, thank you very much, Manoj. That was absolutely wonderful. Really proud of you and the RACC College. And I look forward to everybody else's webinars. Um, so, you know, I expect my inbox to be full tomorrow with volunteers. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank Keep it going forward. Very much indeed. Right. I'm going to turn the recording off now. And, thank you. Uh, and the meeting but thank you so much indeed and say thanks to the cat for the publicity